Hey everybody, today we're on a super cool adventure into low sugar jelly and I'm excited because I'm trying to cut back on sugar and salt and this is going to be a great recipe. This is in the all new ball book of canning and preserving. This is very cool. They have all kinds of really neat recipes and one of them is this one. It's the low sugar roasted strawberry chamomile jelly. I'm excited about it. I'm going to I'm gonna I'm gonna probably make more than one batch because I do have extra strawberries, but it just sounds so good But it's there's a little bit of work to it, but there's not very many ingredients So it doesn't make it hard um, The first thing you need is three cups of water and four regular chamomile tea bags And I use this brand because I have it and I like it and it's really good So I've got four of those tea bags and then three pounds of strawberries and you need to have those washed and hulled and then you're going to need four tablespoons of low sugar, no sugar pectin, and that would be this. I'm super excited to try this and see how we like it. Um, it you, you use less sugar, honey, or other sweeteners, and so I'm excited about that. You need a quarter of a cup of sugar and a quarter of a cup of honey. And you know, when you uh, pour out your honey to measure it, if you spray your measuring container like your little cup or whatever with some cooking spray your honey will just slide right out so it's not hard to get it out so the first thing you're gonna do which I've already done this part is take the three cups of water and the four you bring that to a boil and then you put the four tea bags in and cover it and let it steep for 30 minutes and I'll take you over here and show you I have it already steeping in there so that's that I have my oven set at 375 because the next thing is to put this tray of washed and hulled three pounds of strawberries in the oven at 375 for 30 to 40 minutes. Remember, you need to have a, a tray or a, a baking sheet that has an edge on it because these are going to release a lot of juices and if you just use a flat cookie sheet, it's just going to run off into your oven and that's going to be a mess. So make sure you've got a, an edge around your... Uh, your sheet that your cooking sheet that you use and so the str the strawberries based on how big they are and these some of them are pretty big will take 30 to 40 minutes while that tea is steeping so it works out great and they're gonna kind of release a whole bunch of juices and then start to shrivel up and then they will be roasted um, and then what you're gonna do is I'll read the directions um, so after that is done you're going to take them out of the oven Add the strawberries and accumulated juices to that tea, then bring it to a boil, and then reduce the, the heat and simmer for 15 minutes, uncovered, um, until the strawberries fall apart. Then you will line a wire mesh with about three layers of dampened cheesecloth and place over a bowl. And then we're going to pour that strawberry mixture into that strainer and don't want to press it down because then the little fibers of strawberry get in there and you won't have super clear, real pretty jelly. Jelly has nothing, it's clear. So you want to make sure that you don't press that down and get it in there. Then you're going to cover and let that set for four hours or overnight until the collected juice measures four cups. And I'll show you what I've got. So I have my big bowl. That's my big bowl. And I have um, a nice strainer, and it's layered with this cheesecloth, which I'll dampen before I put the strawberry mixture in. But I like the fact that you can see the strainer doesn't touch the bottom of the bowl, and that lets it drip nicely without sitting in it. So I don't want that to happen. So I've got a big bowl with a strainer in it. And then um, after that has set for at least four hours up to overnight, and it's not dripping anymore, and you have at least four cups of the mixture then you're going to combine that juice with the pectin and in a stainless steel or enamel dutch oven bring it to a full rolling boil that can't be stirred down over high heat stirring constantly then you're going to put in the sugar and the honey and if you want that salt i'm leaving it out then you're going to return the mixture to a full rolling boil boil hard a minute and then stirring constantly then you're going to remove from the heat you're going to skim the foam off you're going to put it in the jars and process it and we'll get to that point later I do want to show you though this only makes four little pint jars or half pints and so I can use this smaller container this smaller pot and you can see there's jars in there I actually have three little little four ounce jars because number one if I have extra I can do little gifts with the four ounce jars but also because they create space so when these jars 
are boiling, they won't fall over. They won't bounce around and, and fall over. Another thing is this process is for 10 minutes. So technically, I don't have to sterilize these jars because sterilization takes place in 10 minutes. You would boil them for 10 minutes before you process anything. But since the process, just like the pears the other day, is 10 minutes or longer, you don't have to pre-sterilize your jars. They'll pre-sterilize during the processing. So that's kind of cool. I like it. You do have to have something on the bottom. Mine has a little miniature um, little uh, trivet in there. But you can just put rings from your jars if you want. So there we are. I'm going to put these in the oven, and I will come back when they're done and then we mix them with the tea mixture okie dokie so my tea has simmered and my strawberries have roasted and they smell fantastic now what I need to do is get the strawberries a little awkward trying to film and do this but I'm going to slide the strawberries into the tea and then we're going to put them on and let them come to a boil and then bring them to a simmer and let them simmer uncovered for 15 minutes. So let's get these in here. Ooh, so much juice. Yummy. They smell really, really good. So, okay. Let me get all that good juice. I'm doing that left-handed. Ooh, I'm pretty good left-handed. Check me out. I'm not left-handed, I'm right-handed. That's why it's such a mess. Okay. Make sure I get all that juice off this tray. Okay. Now, there we are. I'm going to put this on the stove, and I'm going to bring this to a boil. And it clearly says... Add the strawberries and, and accumulated juices to the tea, bring to a boil, and then reduce the heat and simmer uncovered for 15 minutes or until the strawberries fall apart. So I will be back when that happens. Okay, the um, strawberry and tea mixture simmered for 15 minutes, and you can see the strawberries have all broken up pretty much. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in here, and I dampened this cheesecloth, and you need to dampen it because if you don't, see when it's damp, the liquid will go right through it. If you don't dampen it, then when you put the moisture, the liquid in there, it'll just absorb into the fibers, and you don't want that. So you want to make sure that you've dampened it. And now I'm going to put this in here and let it strain until there's at least four cups of it, and it'll be four hours to overnight, um, which is perfect because this is just right. We're going out to dinner with friends, so it should be able to sit until we get home. And then maybe I'll get up in the morning, depending on how long we're gone. We'll see if I get four, four cups of this by the time we get home or so. Then I will go ahead and, and jar this up and process it tonight. So let's just see. I'll show you. So you can see down there the liquid coming out and that is going to be so pretty and clear red strawberry oven roasted strawberry and chamomile jelly i'm excited this is hot put this little glove on so i'm going to let that sit i'll let you see me put the rest of it in there and then i'll put the little silicone cover on that i love these things and we'll just let that be until I get home. Okay. All right. So there it is. It's going to strain until I get home. And I'll check it. And then I'm going to cover this over. So when uh, I flip these up because this is damp and it'll sit there and drip on the corners. Um, so... When that's all done, then we're going to add the pectin and bring it to a boil. Let me see. It says combine the strawberry juice and pectin um, and bring it to a boil that can't be stirred down. And then you add the sugar and honey, bring it back to a boil and boil hard for a minute. Then you skim the foam off and you jar it up. So as soon as that's done, I'll uh, be back to you. Okay, we're back. It's been actually, I'm going to say... 
six hours since I first set this up to drain through the strawberry mixture through that cheesecloth and I have about four cups here just exactly it worked out perfectly but now the uh, directions tell me to take this uh, strawberry juice and the pectin which is four tablespoons of the uh, low or no sugar pectin and I'm going to put that in this pot and then it says stainless steel or enamel which this is and I'm going to bring it to a full rolling boil that cannot be stirred down over high heat and I'm going to be stirring that constantly once that happens I'm going to put the quarter of a cup of sugar and the quarter of a cup of honey in it and I'm going to bring it back to a boil and let it boil hard for one minute then I'm going to remove it I'm going to bring it right back here we're going to skim the foam off and then we're going to jar things up so I'm going to go ahead and put this juice in there. This is going to be such a pretty color. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the pectin in as well. And then we'll come right over here to the stove. I wonder what my light is like. Can you guys see all right? I'll try to get a better light on there. Anyway, so there's that. I'm going to turn this on. We're going to get this mixed in and then we're going to bring it to a boil and we're going to let it boil for get it to a boil and then I'm going to add the sugar and the honey so once I get it to the boil I'll bring you back so you can see me add the sugar and honey and then boil hard for a minute and then we'll put it in the jars and we'll process it which by the way the jars are in this little blue uh, kettle and the thing is as long as the jars are covered by an inch of water you're fine and I have them hot packed so they're at about 180 degrees and the reason you want to do that is because you don't want to put super hot liquid which this will be into a cold jar because it could crack it and you don't want that so these will be hot packed in those nice hot jars so I will be back in just a moment okay now it's boiling so I'm going to add in my quarter cup of sugar and my quarter cup of honey. I've got this little uh, hand mitt on because hold your hands over this stuff when it's boiling and it splashes on. It hurts. So I just try to put some sort of a hand protection on. So there's that. And my honey is still a little... It's a little bit solidified, but that's only because it's not been warm enough for it. That's fine. It'll loosen right up in here. So now I'm going to bring this back to a boil and let it boil hard for a minute. And I'm hoping that the sugar and the honey will give it some good flavor because before you add that, if you just taste it, it's not great. So hopefully that sugar will make it even better. I'm sure it will. It's just there's no sweetness to it at all. So it's kind of bitter, actually. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it up to a boil. I'm going to boil it hard for a minute. That's like where you stir like this, and you can't stir the boil down. Like it just keeps boiling. So we'll do that for a minute, and then I'll come back, and we'll take off this foam. See how there's that foam? We'll want to take that off. So it's nice and clear in the jars, and we'll jar it up, and then it processes for 10 minutes. So I will be back to you after this comes to a boil and boils for a minute. Okay, guys, so I have got a lot of the foam off. I just want to show you what I'm doing. So I'm taking a spoon, and I'm going through. I've already jarred one jar up, and then I realized my camera wasn't on properly. So we're starting over a little bit for you. Anyway, I'm going through there and pulling out little bits of foam that are on the top because you don't want that to be on the top of your jars it doesn't make it very attractive so I'm gonna get that out of there and I might even skim a little bit off from the top of the jar when I put it in there so anyway there's that so that's gonna look good now I'm gonna get another jar I actually did one already but we're gonna do it again so let me get a jar we got my little glove on because these guys are hot. And then I'm going to set my funnel on there. And 
It's going to fill to about a quarter of an inch from the top, which is about three quarters of the way up the neck of the jar. So here we go. And just about there looks good. And I'm going to take my spoon and get a little bit more of this foam off of here. It's not that bad, but I want to get it. Because this is kind of a cool jam. All right. And now I'm going to take a, a paper towel with nice hot water on it. And I'm going to wipe the edge of that rim because you know you always, always do that. And then I am going to be using Tattler lids again. I put one of those on there. Put my little ring on. Just a fingertip tight. And look at that. There is a jar of roasted strawberry chamomile jelly. So I'm going to fill the other jars. And then I will put them all in the kettle and I will start them once they get to boiling and you know there's going to be at least an inch of water over the top once it gets to boiling then I'm going to let them process for 10 minutes then I'm going to turn it off take the lid off and let them sit for about five minutes and then I'll bring them out and I'll show you what they look like okay guys I want you to see that it actually did do four half pint jars the three little um four ounce jars I'm going to leave in there because it makes a spacer and it helps these jars from um, tipping over when the boiling water makes them kind of bounce around a little bit and that will kind of help that from happening so now I'm going to bring this to a boil once it reaches a boil we're going to time it for 10 minutes I'm going to put the lid on and there we go we'll be back when it's done okay guys they're done they processed for 10 minutes and then I took the lid off and let them sit for five more minutes. And now I just want to show you, since I'm using those Tadler lids, I put these little handy glove things on because with Tadler lids, you have to crank them down nice and tight after you pull the jars out of the canners, whether it's pressure canning or oil water canning, either way, you want to Tighten them down. Ooh, hot, hot. Hot, hot, hot. Okay. Let's see this one. Let me get this down. There we go. Now, I want you to see how pretty they are. Let me get this one, I think. Eh. I don't know if you can see the color there. I don't think so but it's the prettiest kind of a dark dark red so I did taste it after the sugar and honey were in there and it tastes really good it's like super tart it's not over sweet it's just real tart and um, that was good because when I I'm gonna try to see if you can see the color good um, anyway see there you can't really tell can you oh well I'll have to show you um, when it's done and there's more light. But anyway, I did taste it, but it's really tangy. It's not super sweet like a lot of jellies are. So I love it. This is what it is. It's the Ball All New Book of Canning right here. And I think it was on page 70. But it is a great recipe. Kind of something different. Yep, there it is, page 70. And look at this, what an idea. You could fill donuts with it, so good. Okay, so there it is. I hope you like the video. I hope you try new things. And again, I appreciate you all for watching.